My name is Joseph Rodriguez. Um, I work out of Fresno, California with Better Life uh, Dental <clears throat> and Full Arch Masters Lab. Uh, I've been doing this here for about four years. Um, I know it's really young in a career, but you know anybody can do this as long as you put in the time and effort. Um, and I'm happy to be here. I'm thankful that um, Zahn has choose, chosen me to present this Quick Bites um, in uh, Desktop Health uh, Flexera. So um, I'm very thankful for this opportunity. Let me go through some of my, my slides for you guys. Like she said, um, we're gonna go through uh, benefits of printing digital designs for same day immediate loading. And let's go ahead and start this. Um, we're gonna go over some learning objectives, uh, indications for 3D printing for same day immediate load prosthetics, uh, characteristics of Flexera that make it the ideal material for full arch printing prosthetics. Um, also case examples of printed prosthetics. Guys, I have three very, very nice uh, case examples here. All three patients, very young in age, um, all three patients um, experiencing the same kind of low self-esteem, um, They, the inability to even know how to smile. Um, and if they do, they always cover it. Um, each one of these patients that I met, um, they tend to cover their face when they're talking. Um, and even if you crack a joke and they happen to crack a smile, their hands go right up. So um, what we're gonna talk about is uh, upper printed partial denture and lower full arch screw retained bridge. Um, the other example is gonna be a upper printed full arch screw retained bridge and lower um, over denture. And then the last case is gonna be our upper FP1 same day screw retained bridge. So um, clinical case number one, this patient name is Steve. He came in with an upper pre-op as an old partial denture, um, very loose fitting, didn't fit. Um, his lower was basically terminal dentition, meaning that it, it needed to come out. He had bad infection and it was causing him some major health issues. Um, so the treatment was upper printed partial and lower same day immediate load, guys. And here's his case, um, similar. So came in, this was his pre-op photo, um, retractors, because we couldn't get him to smile for anything. So we said, let's stick some retractors in your face so we can get a proper 2D picture. Um, the initial presentation, failing lower dentition, like I said, upper acrylic stay plate, poorly fitting. Um, you can see there in the back, um, in the back number 14 molar, he's got a wire uh, C class for retention, um, which barely was hanging on, um, on this partial denture or the stay plate, sorry. And uh, when he spoke, his anterior four were kind of flopping down. Um, he was, he was, he just, he wasn't able to eat very well either. Um, he had to pull it out and you, you know, when you're in front of people too as well, you don't want to take your teeth out in front of them. So um, this is what he was presented with. Um, he had mobile teeth on the lower as well. So that that causes an issue when it comes to having to get your meals in. Um, so here's that kind of the design, what the, the top view on the top uh, left corner there, that's the upper partial design. Um, and you could see that I have designed um, those retraction C clasps around his molars. Um, and when I was designing this, actually, I made it to be very, very retentive because I knew that his existing stay plate was very loose. And, um, and with this, with the amount of retention that I designed into it, he, could, he was able to eat with it as well. So that's that he was you know, very grateful for that. Um, and then you can see there in the middle, that's the lower screw retained bridge, same day immediate load designed to the MUAs, directly to the MUAs, no um, external parts needed for this besides the screw. Um, so the, the cost and material, we keep it down really low because you know you get the strength in the bottle, the resin, you can get 200 or more prints in a bottle. So there was no need for any parts. We designed it direct to the MUA. And then the image there on the right side, we've got both uh, appliances in occlusion. And this case, we actually, I asked for a stone model because in my head, I knew that I needed a stay plate 
And in pro when we post process a stay plate, um, you want to make sure that you throw it in the auto flash on the model because it tends to warp because the, the most retentive part of this are those little C-class that were um, designed onto the distal end of those molars. And if this case or if this print warps in, in any way, you're not going to get the warpage back to where the original fit was. So you place it onto the model and then you go ahead and run it in the auto flash a couple times. Um, and then once it's once it's uh, gotten its first cure, you could take it off then, place it in and it won't warp. It's pretty much well set. Um, so at this point, my design is done. I'm going to transition to getting it into the printer. And so when going into the printer, you want to make sure that there's certain things to look for. So this is a quick video of how to look at your print layer by layer. There's a little eye on the side there. That, and when you, put, when you click on the eye, you go up and you scroll and it'll go ahead and show you layer by layer. Um, so those of you who have this printer and, and are skipping this step who might be getting fails, this could be a reason why. Um, it's very important to check each layer to see if your layers are well supported. And right there, right there, I'm gonna show you, is a little cusp tip that was unsupported. So we have to make sure that every cusp tip, every little high point in your design is supported, okay? So then I'm gonna go ahead and um, highlight the area, edit supports, go back to where exactly that spot was. It was right there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. And then you're gonna see now it's got a support on it. So if it didn't have the support and I ran this print, it's gonna print no matter what, except it's not gonna be attached to your design. It's gonna float in the resin. And that can cause a failure, that can cause a puncture into your, your um, oxygen layer. So a lot of the things that happen in these prints, if they're failing, they tend to be human error, guys. It's not the machine, it's, it's usually us. Um, nine times out of 10, it's us. So I just wanted to make sure that I, that I show this little nugget for you guys. Um, it's very important. It's one of the things that we've learned. So here's another one where, Doc always asks me, is it printing yet? So once I've got my design and we've already checked and double checked everything, here it starts to show, yes, it's going, it's getting to the printer, it's uploading. And we have ours directly connected uh, via ethernet. So it shoots the design right away. And there you can see it's 31 minutes. And I mean, that's, that's ideal right there. 31 minutes for an upper stay plate and a lower screw retained immediate load. <clears throat> the guy doesn't, he wasn't even expecting the stay plate, guys. He he came in thinking, you know, I just need a lower. And we went ahead and printed him a new upper because of how bad the upper was. So the printed uh, upper partial, Flexera Smile, we didn't use, um, we just went ahead and designed this monolithic. We printed it monolithic. And we characterized it in OptiGlaze and Nano Varnish. Um, total print time, 37 minutes. The, it fit like a charm. I mean, he put it in, snapped in. He kind of like was like, oh my gosh, what? You know, it's 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 a little brief moment of panic because he can't get it out and they didn't feel like the one that he had before. So, but after that, it was just it became like part of his upper now. Um, and the digital design can be refabricated at any time. For instance, if he came in and one of those little hooks were broken off, um, we could either, um, I'm also an orthodontic tech. I was an orthodontic tech for 14 years. If we needed to bend a wire and add a wire to that, we could. Um, acrylic salt and pepper technique bonds really well to this Flexera resin. Um, but if it's too much to ask, I have the design and we have it in the printer already. So we could just rerun the print 32, 37 minutes later um, and it's ready to go. Um, so that's it's very, very um, important that you guys understand when we're designing these cases, we're saving the files and we're also saving the print job. So if we need to reprint something, we just upload the print job. Um, and if we need to, we can have a couple of these on hand for, for emergencies. So lower full arch implant bridge, immediate load with upper um, 
removable partial denture in flexera smile. And so this guy was, he was a, he had a very hard personality. Um, you couldn't get the guy to smile, uh, but there's his bite, uh, retractors again. But once he placed it in, I mean, look at that natural smile. This guy looks like he was just, he just stepped out of the, out of a shop, you know, he got it all ready to go and his smile is, is perfect and he just can't stop smiling. And that's a genuine smile right there, guys. And that's what we do this for, is for that smile. So his first visit was for pre-op scans, photos and CBCT. The second visit was for extractions, implants, scans and immediate load, plus um, the upper uh, removable partial denture. And the third visit's just gonna be a follow-up. So total cost in materials was $30. Um, and that's because it's just all resin and a couple of screws, no tie bases needed, um, no wires needed, just the resin and and a couple of screws to, to hold it in. So this guy was very happy at delivery. He cried and, and it was a very emotional time for him. So we're gonna go on to the next case, clinical case number two, Brianna. Upper and lower terminal dentition, guys. Um, very bad perio as well. Um, patient hated to smile. One of those things that you see, they come in, they they cover their mouth when they speak. They're very embarrassed. Um, so the first visit, pre-op records, intraoral scan slash alginate impressions, CBCT, 3D facial imaging and photos. But not just that, guys. Also, uh, we want to remind our patients too, because um, especially when they're young, uh, that their comfort and our and their expectations are what really matter most to us. They don't know what exactly they're they're coming in and what to expect. They might have seen a commercial about um, same day teeth implants. They don't really know anything besides that. So we just us as being the professionals, we try to comfort them and let them know that hey, it's it's okay to to start thinking that you guys are going to be able to smile again. So we just want to reiterate that hey, their comfort and their expectations are what really matter to us, guys. Um, so this is a tale of implants and dentures. Um, hopeless dentition, guys, decay and perio. If you could take a look there, um, it's it, she said that her mouth hurted, and just by looking at it, 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 it does, it, it hurts, and the infection is bad, and not just that, um, but the infection causes skin problems as well. So um, you're gonna see in the before and after is what I mean by that. Upper implant fixed bridge, lower overdenture, same day printed provisionals using the Flexera Smile. And so here's my design with the 3D face. This is the pre-op. So in this case, we used um, stone models to get a, a real accurate bite. And then there is the design the smile design proposal with the 3D face. So I don't know if you guys have been able to use 3D face while designing, but it's really a game changer. Um, it's, it's very predictable to see your design um, on a face, not just a 2D picture. And so then here's her bridge going into the printer. Um, it's already been printing um, and we're just kind of going through. I don't know if any of you actually have seen an Envision one, but this is the main screen. Um, you can rotate your design around just to see where what it looks like to verify that this is the part that you're designing. <clears throat> and it's at its last seconds. So we like to catch these things as they're coming out of the bath. Um, another thing to note, I've used other printers in the past, and at this point, it's it's the moment of truth. But it's never really the moment of truth with the E1, guys. I mean, as soon as this thing comes up, you know that it's ready to go. Um, and I've had plenty of, of sleepless nights where I'm printing overnight on other printers and I'm thinking, man, I wish I had a camera to see if this thing printed or not. But this time with this, I mean, it's just a piece of cake, man. You just set it in the printer and you just let it go. And then when you come in in the morning or, or later on, it's there, it's just hanging there just waiting for you to post process. So that's very easy guys, very predictable. Um, here it is right here, here's her same day transition. So that's the upper, um, just opti-glazed and nano varnish and the lower same, same thing with the finishing on that is just opti and, and nano varnish. 
and that's just an overdenture. Um, so when you look at that smile, well, it's not just the smile yet, she was very numb at the time, but when you see that, I mean, the results are amazing. It looked exactly like the design on the 3D face and the midline was on, the smile line was perfect. And as you can see here, that's a, a two week post-op. Her skin was starting to clear up very well because of the infection being removed, those infected teeth, um, some of the bone that was bad, um, it was removed and, and it actually plays a role in, in your skin. And we've noticed that in a lot of our patients that when they come back, not just have we restored their smile and their confidence, but their skin looks a lot better. So this is the strength in the bottle that, that we're talking about. It's not just the actual strength that the properties of the resin that are built, but the strength in being that you can print something in 30 minutes or less and come up with these results, that's strong in itself. So this girl, she's flexing right now, wherever she is, she's just smiling no matter where she is. I'm sure she's got a, a clear mask on somewhere because <laughs> we have strong man, uh, mask mandates here in Fresno. So I'm sure she's wearing a clear mask. And then our third case study, this, this one guys is, uh, this one we just recently did. Um, his name is Brandon, failing restorative. Um, he hated his smile, also recently engaged and wanted to be able to smile for his wedding photos. So again, we take all the necessary pre-op records designed for an FP1 immediate load with canine root banking. So I don't know if you guys know what that is exactly, but it's when the roots of the canines are actually left in. And what it does is it gives the gum tissue the natural look, the natural root eminence. Sometimes when those canines are removed, the gums tend to just flatten out. But when you go FP1 and you got a talented doctor who can do some root banking, you guys are gonna see what that looks like in a minute. Um, so here's his case. This is why same day digital design and immediate load with Flexera is the winning combination. So this is his pre-op photos. Um, like I said, um, failing restorative, um, just, and, and the, the, the thing about it was his tissue looked very well. He, he had nice bone. Um, so we didn't want to have to go in there and remove anything. We just removed his teeth and, um, left the roots for his, his canines. So here's what it looks like. If you guys notice there up in the top right corner, when you look in the canine area, you can still see some bone there. Well, that's his roots. And those are what's going to preserve that look in his gums. Um, and he's also got his uh, those extraction sockets where we design into those. So the post-op records for FP1 design, tissue scans, and photogrammetry. Um, in this case, we, we have PIC here. So that's what you see there, those little domino flags. Um, and so with that, I get those records and I'm good to go. Here's my design. Um, that's also using a 3D face, so it's no guessing. Even with a 2D picture, when you have a 2D picture up in the front, um, you can't see side profile, you can't move the face around, you can't see it. With the 3D face, it's a really, it's, it really makes my job easy. Um, and so there on the left side, you could see the design. Access holes and implants were placed perfectly along the ridge, um, perfect to the design um fp1 style if you guys know what that means it's just replacing tooth um, we're not replacing anything else there's no massive bone reduction there's no reason to have to design any pink um so that's why it looks like that um let's go on to the next one this is um where we're placing it inside of the printer and we're going to get a time an estimated time of print. i love watching this part right here i mean that's that's really awesome you can see the bullets on those Pontex too. Those are what's gonna go into the extraction sockets. 27 minutes, guys. 27 minutes, you got two arches, one just in case. Cause I mean, this resin is very, very strong. It's 136 megapaxel strength, which is stronger than some PMMAs. And, um, but I mean, people break zirconia, you know, people, people will break anything in the mouth. So we print two just on have one on standby um that way our lab doesn't get backed up with any other extra work so we have two on hand one to deliver and one for an emergency and here's the delivery up right corner that's 
exactly what I thought it was going to look like because I used the 3D face. We had accurate scans. Um, very important that the surgical scans are as accurate as possible because that makes my job a whole lot easier as well. Um, and then look at that smile, finger assisted smile. He was so numb he couldn't even he couldn't even smile, but he knew that he had something great going on. So let's move on to this next picture really quick. So two week post op. I didn't leave any captions on this because I was so excited to show this, and it speaks for itself. I'll just let that just sit for you guys for a little bit. Just take it in. The, the way that the papillas have settled into this appliance, the way that the root banking was, was done on this case, it looks like his natural teeth. And this is just Flexera smile, guys, with a little bit of characterization along the incisal edge but this is what it looked like two weeks post-op. And you cannot get this any other way, but with digital design and 3D printed same day immediate loading. But there's no other way to get this results. And a fully digital case, digitally designed under one hour, um, Envision One Flexera print 27 minutes, post cure and process takes 10 minutes, um, support removal, smoothened OptiGlaze, uh 20 minutes the patient was um he was an actual fam uh patient that we had here for our course um so we hooked him up later on in the afternoon so he was hooked up to iv around 1 p.m but then he was out the door by 5 30. so that's four hours in the chair for a life-changing moment guys um so i don't know about you but i mean if it's gonna look like this and and the guy was ecstatic. I mean, him and his his fiance were thrilled. We actually did his fiance before this, and it's what convinced him to do this surgery as well. Um, they both turned out great, and uh, I can't wait to see their wedding photos. <laughs> well, that's it for me, guys. Um, I just want to give a special thanks to Zon Academy for allowing me to um, present for you guys. Uh, Desktop Health for um, reaching out to me and and saying hey can do you have the time to do this we would love to have you present um i want to give a shout out to uh better life center and my team there um without them and their records and and everything that they do they then i couldn't do my job i'm not the ones in there doing the surgeries taking the taking the, the scans um i want to give a shout out also to full arch masters lab team um without them then you know they they make the work that i design look great i mean they we've got some real artists in there and some a good coordinating team um and I, and those guys they 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 help me look really good when really it's it's all of us looking really good as a team um i also want to give a shout out to my doc dr dunlop he um he's given me a real good vehicle to succeed in and he helped me i'm, I'm kind of what you would call a homegrown technician because i came off of the bench in a in a lab where we just did um, appliances for re braces removal, you know, and so uh, he really allowed me to get in here and, and learn what I needed to learn. Um, I think it's really important to learn side by side next to a doc because they know what the surgery is going to look like and they know what they want the design to look like. So it just helped me get better as a technician all the way around. And then I want to give a special shout out to my wife, Stephanie Rodriguez, because she allowed me to stay way, way past my bedtime here at the at the office to get better and, and hone in my craft. Um, she would bring me dinners at late at night. Um, so I got to give it all all props up to my wife, because without without her allowing me to do that, I, I know I wouldn't be here. And in fact, she's the one that found me the job um, from Dr. Ryan Dunlop. I wasn't looking. I was comfortable. And she said, hey, look at this opportunity. And she pushed me into it. And it was my it was, basically it was sink or swim. So I decided to swim. So um, that's it, guys, for me. I'm going to go ahead and kick it back to Fran um, for the Q&A session. Hopefully I uh, gave you guys a lot of information and hopefully we got a lot of questions. Thanks, Joe. And we do. We have a couple of questions. And the first one is what products and techniques did you use to add characterization to the monolithic 
Flexera printed partial? Yeah, so um, we use OptiGlaze and a nano varnish to seal it. Um, we have a, a, a special blend of OptiGlaze that we use. Um, there isn't just one shade in that kit that we that we tend to use. Um, obviously, red is one of them, but we also put a couple other mixtures to get that that uh, level of pinkness. Um, and then we go ahead and we just we uh, seal the whole thing with a nano varnish and uh, light cure all of that together. And it seal it seals really good, and it lasts it lasts a pretty good long time too. Okay, and the next question is desirability after insertion over implants. Does it have to go to a skilled bar substructure or can the material go implant level? So um, we, we usually go straight to the MUA. Um, implant level, it, it can be um, if it's designed that way, um, but we usually just use MUAs um, and we never, we never use a tie base with this material. It, it's just always strictly designed direct to the, the connection. And um, there are moments when we design like something like a long-term temporary, where we will design like a peak bar and we'll do printed su uh, superstructure. And that bonds extremely well. I mean, once you got that, that Flexera on top of a peak bar, um, then that thing is not going anywhere. It's it's really a sturdy appliance, um, and we use um, Reliax to um, to uh, bond the two materials. Okay, perfect. Can you? The next one is: Can you speak to the actual strength and moisture solubility of this product versus other printed resins? Sure. So um, with Flexera. Um, when the the megapaxel strength is 136, um, and I seen a chart that that stated after being underwater for two days, um, you actually do lose a little bit of megapaxel strength. Um, maybe I think it was 126 after two days in in submerged in water. But compared to the other resins on the market, it is by far still stronger than the rest of those. And I'm not gonna name names here cause I don't name drop, but there's four other major resins that are out there that um, don't match the, uh, the strength in that. And we have another, what was the name of the 3D facial software? So the 3D facial software that we, that we have here in house, um, we actually use Zircon and that's Face Hunter with Zircon um, but we're also in development with um, with somebody else in producing a 3D facial uh, image, uh, 3D facial camera. Um, for those who um, don't want to buy into a whole system uh, with Zircon's on, I mean we've we've grown to love it, and um, and the 3D face is, it is really a game changer. So um, I'd urge any of you CAD designers out there who um, are looking for something. I mean, anything is better than nothing. So we usually use a 2D picture if we don't have a 3D face. But um, yeah, there's a lot of options out there these days and we're actually um, coming up with one ourselves with the Full Arch Masters. 